Hello, world. Welcome back to another dev update here on D&D Beyond. Uh, I am joined by our community manager, Melly Doucette. Hey, Melly. Hey, Joe. And uh, I'm Joe. Uh, I I do the I run the the content here at D&D Beyond, and I'm the the face on camera until I find some better faces to do it. I am uh, streaming live from the surface of the sun today, uh, <laughs> the surface of the sun directly off camera. Uh, I love working from home so much. Uh, hey, we're get, we've got some cool stuff to to talk about today. We're going to be uh, uh, doing a little bit of road mapping uh, for things that are coming up. But then we're also going to reveal a bunch of really cool Candlekeep Mysteries pre-order perks, and uh, we're going to be meeting uh, uh, Julie Hawkins over at DDB. She's one of our she's one of our designers. She's a software engineer. So we're going to get into a lot of um, uh, what goes into designing all the cool extras that you get on your character sheet and uh, and all that really cool stuff. She's super fun. Uh, we might force her to sing. I don't know. Nah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, for, mm, forcing maybe. people to sing, maybe not my style. But if she just she's listening right now but you know so it's like if she just like comes in singing and like that, that could be cool that could be really memorable and make for a really good show that could maybe save the show julie no pressure um uh, comes in comes in singing <laughs> is like a nice uh like bard version of fighters yeah but uh and uh, uh if you're if you're on the stream we don't have uh stream heroes right melly that's correct. Yeah, we don't have stream heroes today. They're taking a, a break. You know, they're in the tavern and they're doing their shopping episode. Uh, but uh, we still are taking <laughs> questions. So go ahead and drop those into the chat. Our mods will be picking those up and making sure that they get to us. So mark them with questions so they can be seen. Perfect. Well, hey, let's uh, let's do let's do ourselves a little bit of road mapping. Uh, so coming up now available and we'll be doing a, a dev update uh, episode uh, dedicated to the app. Uh, specifically here coming soon just to there's a lot of cool stuff coming of uh, uh, for the D, D beyond player app and so we'll be jumping into it soon but in the meantime spell management is now available on the android uh ddb player app um uh, is coming soon spell management on the ios ddb uh player app uh there's a there's a few more sort of steps and hurdles that you've got to jump through uh with apple with the itunes store uh, I think Ted Lasso has to do a full review of your app um, before. Yeah, Canac personally. Live. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, that's coming soon. We swear. But in the meantime, Android users spell management now available. Uh, also coming soon. Uh, we're getting a life, you guys, uh, and that means full support of the Life Domain Cleric. Finally coming soon. Uh, you bet we're gonna make a big old deal about it uh, uh, yeah, when it excited. drops, uh, but but that's coming up. So get excited about that. Um, I've been listening to the, the weird journey of <laughs> coming to fruition, and it's it's actually kind of intense and kind of crazy. Uh, so we'll be doing a full app, sort of focusing on that. My yeah, it's is, like our, our life cleric had to kind of go through like a whole one to 20 campaign. <laughs> really, really did. Yeah, like a trip to Avernus and back. And uh, yeah, <laughs> no, uh, super crazy. And then uh, finally, coming soonish, uh, uh, rolling on those monster stat blocks. So being able to roll dice on the monster stat blocks uh, in the encounter builder uh, is coming, uh, what I'm going to call soonish. Uh, we talked about it a little bit about what it's going to look like and what it's going to mean and sort of where it belongs on, you know, the roadmap for the encounter builder uh, a couple weeks ago with Andrew uh, and the, uh, the actual feature will be going live again. All that said, let's get to our main event. Hey, if you're just joining us, uh, we've got a really cool guest. Melly and I have a really cool guest for today's update. Uh, we're bringing on uh, to introduce some really cool uh, pre-order perks for Candlekeep Mysteries, which is still available for pre-order right now on the D&D &D Beyond. D &D Beyond Marketplace right now. Uh, man, if I'm going to do my advertising and infomercialing, I better do it right the first time, right? Um, book releases on Tuesday, but you can get your pre-orders in uh, before then. But uh, all that said, let's bring up Julie Hawkins to the show. Hey, Julie, what's up? Hey. Hey, uh, I'm supposed to sing here, right? So uh, yep. uh, I'm here to talk about candle keep, right? <laughs> Beautiful, lovely, Amazing. well done, well done, well done. Uh, so uh, thanks so much for having me. No, I, I'm super pumped to have you. So, but I know that people are, uh, you know, are, are going to be like, I want to see the candle keep things. So, uh, not to say that you're less important than candle keep things, Julie, but. I'm gonna have you show off some candle keep things, and then we will get into uh, we will get into the essence 
of uh, of of Dooley, if that sounds good. Uh, so yes. uh, we we we've shown them before, but uh, let's take a look at them dice one more time. Can we do that? Can we take a look at them researchers' dice one more time? They're these flowy. are so cool. No, I'm I'm super into these, uh, and I'd love any thoughts that that you've got on them. Just like from a design standpoint, I think would be really cool. Yeah. So. There's a lot of uh, a lot of thought that goes into these into these die, um, and and you know I'm actually not on the team that works specifically on the dice, but I know that there's uh, you know a ton of thought that goes into each of these to keep them themed for the books that come out, and just to give all the uh, really awesome effects that you can get, you know, for for crit uh, effects and things like that. Um, and of course, the team's always experimenting with new skins that they can uh, wrap these dice with to kind of create new new looks and feels. So, um, as always, we're, we're always excited when we've got you know a new design that we can sort of uh, review internally and get the sneak peek on before it rolls out to everybody else. So, totally, it's always and, super fun stuff. Yeah, and we're gonna do. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of the one of the shows we're gonna do at some point soon is a show like on the dice, like. Are they actually random? How do we make them random? Like, how do we build them? Because uh, there's actually there's actually a lot of really cool intricacies that that go into putting them together that I think uh, that you guys will really really dig. Uh, but Julie, something you did have a direct design hand in. Uh, do you want to introduce uh, Do you want to introduce these portrait frames? Yeah, definitely. This is a this is always something that I find to be just a, a really fun, exciting part of each release that we do. Um, you know, uh, customizing your character sheet is just like the extra cherry on top of the experience of playing D and D. Um, when we have we're in a digital space, we can't necessarily come to the table physically with our hats and our cosplay on. So this is like the next best thing. Um, and these are a, a cool preview that we can show off of all the frames that we're releasing for Candlekeep, um, some of which are going to be animated. Um, I will keep that a mystery, mystery which ones are actually animated, um, but look forward to that. And, uh, and as always, these are available uh, when you pre-order the, the new book. Um, so they'll be available to you upon the day of release. You'll be able to go into your character sheet and sort of you know decide which theme uh, which book, uh, which, you know, which, which look and feel you want for your sheet, so. They're really, really yeah. cool. And then uh, also speaking of the pre-order perks, the dice are available now. So if you pre-ordered the book, uh, you, you got them dice. Uh, and then- Yeah, uh, go and check your My Dice page. And if you don't see them and you've pre-ordered, you might just have to uh, resync your account, which you can do in your uh, profile page on your account. So check that first and hopefully you'll have your new dice to roll. Or you can do what I do and just angrily refresh over <laughs> and over again uh, to no avail. Uh, and then uh, Julie, so uh, those really cool frames, backdrops, that kind of thing uh, will be available uh, Tuesday, yeah? Yes, yep. Tuesday, um, you should be able to, you know, go into your sheet and uh, apply any of the new frames that are delivered to you and any of the new backdrops. And um, I think we have, I believe, six theme colors as well. Uh, so look forward to all of that on Tuesday. I feel like every single wizard is going to be using those books. They're just going to be like, perfect. This is what my spell book looks like and I'm in it. Yeah, no, they're pretty, they're pretty sick looking. Um, so, hey, Julie, we're going to interrogate you now. Um, but before that, yeah, uh, and that's the cool thing about having all these different frames and, and backdrops is you can make combinations that are sort of unexpected to theme your character. I use a bunch of just like random stuff for, for yeah, like the fishbowl with like the fish swimming around. That's a, that's a nice go-to when I have no idea what to pick. Yes. <laughs> or the blinky eyes. I love the, the yes. blinky eyes. Blinky eye, yeah. Blinky yes. eyes are sweet. Uh, the, the the Nine Hells, of course, uh, made famous and immortalized in song by yes. you, um, uh, which is one of my still one of my favorite like <laughs> D and D Beyond memories, where we were putting that musical together, and um, uh, <laughs> Adam was like, "Oh, you know, Julie went to school for musical theater, and she can choreograph and sing, and she's going, you know, it was just really cool because you're just like very just kind of chill and like very modest, and you're just kind of like, hey, yeah, I can do that. I had some ideas." <laughs> It was very, very fun. I'll try, I'll try that. <laughs> yeah, why not? 
Why not? No, it's crazy that that was a whole year ago, um, but that was so much fun. Take a look at us now. Well, hey, um, let's get into a little a little Q and A with you. I want to chat uh, with you a little bit about what you do here. Um, what would you say you do here? Uh, uh, graphic design, how it fits into sort of the larger tool set and the character sheet. Uh, but first, Melly, since Stream Heroes is down, let's do uh, some giveaways uh, the old fashioned way. Yep, we've got a legendary bundle giveaway going in the chat. It's exclamation glow up, uh, glow up your character sheet. And go ahead and enter that for your chance to win a legendary bundle. Perfect, thank you. So, Julie, hey. Uh, hey. First of all, uh, I'd love to just, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about you, how you arrived, you know, at D&D &D Beyond, uh, and then we can kind of get into uh, the ins and outs of, uh, of what you do here. Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, um, my journey to D&D &D Beyond actually started when I made a, a big career shift. Um, I previously was a massage therapist for eight years, and then I worked in the Colorado cannabis industry for a few years and decided that I wanted to learn how to code. You know, it's always something that I wanted to do. Um, so I went to school again to learn how to code. And at the end of that, I was watching Critical Role and heard a certain Sam Regal make an announcement that DDB was hiring their sort of first round of, of new devs for their, um, you know, they had been around for about a year and, and needed new, new people to come in. So answered the the ad that was you know put out and I think it was sung by Sam Regal yep, <laughs> so I sung back um, and essentially you know uh, the 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 strings of fate tied together and and then I was able to get my first job in the tech industry at D and D Beyond um, and have been working on the character sheet uh, specifically ever since which has just been the most amazing experience um, so that that's kind of my journey to where I am now I've been working on the character sheet for the last three years and with a, a heavy hand in the interest of the look and feel uh, customizations and sort of that, um, how, do, how do we get to interact with our characters uh, in a digital way? Right on. Well, first of all, I love, um, no matter how weird anyone's journey to the team has been, like, you know, Pat was like, I flew army helicopters. And I think Andrew was like, I drove here from the wasteland in my RV. And Julie's like, I worked in weed, man. Uh, but the common <laughs> link is all everyone heard the siren cry of Sam Regal uh, <laughs> telling us to come work here. Yes. I absolutely love that. Um, so look, I really like uh, having you on to talk about the character sheet because um, from like a visual uh, a point of view because we've talked to Andrew we've talked to Pat a little bit we know that you know where we're coming from in terms of like how important being able to interact with the character sheet is and how it links to the game log and how it links to the encounter builder and stuff like that but now I I, I love what you said a little earlier about how since most of the time we're going to be playing you know folks are playing virtually now so many times we're playing virtually where I can't come to the table with the hat that I made um uh, and oh shoot, now that I said that, they're going to expect me to wear a hat. They uh, absolutely are expecting you to wear a hat. Soon. I uh, <laughs> see it. <laughs> coming soon. So many empty promises already. Curse crossbow homebrew still hasn't happened. Funny hat still hasn't happened. Um, Somebody's but that, making a list somewhere. I, I, I love uh, I love sort of what you say sort of about this is now, this is how we inter you can interject personality into the character sheet, which again is an anchor of D&D &D, D &D Beyond's approach to playing the game. Uh, so I'd love to get into that a little bit. Like, why should we love character flair? And why do we as DDB uh, love it so much? Yeah, you know, um, like you said, it, it's, a, it's a really important part of the game is that immersion piece that we want to feel really connected to the characters that we're creating and the world that we're playing in. And if, if we're around a table doing that, there's a lot of physical things that we can do to sort of create that feel. Mm -hmm. um, but at D&D Beyond, we wanna figure out how do we inject that into the digital space? Um, so for character flair specifically, you know, when I'm playing a game, uh, you know, and it, it, the setting is right with the Frost Maiden and it's, I want it to just feel cold and, um, and, and sort of dark, and, but with that sort of magical, um, you know, Aurora Borealis. If I go to D&D Beyond and make a character sheet, my, my default character looks great. It looks awesome. Uh, but if I can 
you know, tweak it just to give me that feel that I'm like in that icy environment with that magical uh, feel around me. That's even better. That just helps me get into character and helps me get into the world. So uh, for each book that rolls out, we have a, such a great opportunity, especially when it's an adventure book, uh, to create that feel for people. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we're always looking for uh, a lot of different options so that you can go through and create combinations that are just unique to what you want to build for your character. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than, you know, to uh, TLDR, they're just fun, right? It's just a fun step in building your character. Uh, and, and oftentimes I think when we're creating characters, we do think about what outfits do they like to wear? What are this, mm -hmm. what hair color do they have? You know, what was their environment that they grew up in? and bringing elements to our, our digital sheet to help remind us of the history behind that character. No, yeah, I always match, uh, I, I always match character sheet to outfit. Um, that, that's, that's just how I approach, <laughs> you know, like, does this theme match the coat? Because uh, it needs to. Uh, so obviously we've rolled out all of these sort of cool ways to, to customize the character sheet. Like it's come a really long way, the, you know, uh, portrait frames, the backdrops, uh, themes, uh, but what I'd love to do is to shake uh, secrets out of you uh, in terms of what might be coming up. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to get you fired, obviously, but obviously there's a lot of pressure right now to impress this audience, you know, so give me scoops. <laughs> pressure from all sides, right? Um, no, I, I would love to share uh, some of the things that are coming down the road. Um, of course, I can't get into details of anything and we want it to, to, to be a little bit of a mystery. Um, but we are really talking very seriously and, and getting some plans together about rolling out Flare specific to subscribers. Uh, so we want to offer some customizations and some really um, just, just cool extra things that you can do with your character sheet uh, just for subscribers. So that is something to look forward to down the, down the road. Um, and that will probably involve all, all the things that we're already doing with frames and themes and backdrops. Um, and then another little uh, gem to look forward to um, is that we are exploring how we can deliver Zoom backgrounds. Um, again, because we are uh, you know, playing often in a, a digital virtual space and, you know, with Zoom calls being and an, an other, uh, you know, chat forums being a way to create a table scenario. Uh, why not have your, your digital character sheet, but then also have your background reflect something about your character or the space that you're in. I love that. I love the idea of being able to sort of uh, really easily and uh, have like a high quality asset to unify. Um, that, that table space just to kind of help keep everyone get immersed. Cause that's the challenge. That's, that's such a big challenge for, um, for playing virtually. Right. Is that, is that, is that immersion? You don't have the, um, uh, you don't have the bowl of snacks in the middle of the table. You don't have like the dimly lit room. Um, so yeah, I, I love the, absolutely love the idea of having those, those zoom backgrounds in there. That's really, really cool. Um, uh, we've had a bunch of people ask, um, how uh because we're gonna take uh we're gonna take some questions from the chat but first mm. a, a, a bigger broader one i wanted to knock out is we've had a lot of people just ask straight up like how do the animations for uh, uh character uh, portrait frames work yeah um so for animation specifically um we always like to have a staff version of each frame um, and and part of that is some accessibility uh, concerns and also you know uh, just computer com performance concerns maybe uh, you just don't have the ability to display those animations but um, we love to deliver an animated version of some of our frames and we do that using sprites um, which is a, a bit of a design technical thing um, but essentially it's a collection of images that uh, a bit like a flipbook each one is a frame that represents a piece of the animation. And we use CSS um, in order to move the image across the screen so that you get the animated effect. Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, and now I know as well, because I'm a dumb idiot that doesn't know how yeah, to do Yeah, the only thing I know that animates them like a GIF. They must just be GIFs. They're GIFs, yes. Because I'm 
Easy. I'm a child. Yeah, I'm a I'm a paid clown, so I don't <laughs> things. Uh, uh, before we get into more, I want to see if I can get you to talk about uh, the idea of customization a, a little more because that sounded pretty cool. Uh, just in general, uh, the the idea of teasing it out for subscribers only, like any of those features, I'd, I'd love to to dig in and. Talk yeah, about it's that. also a question that we're seeing uh, coming in from chat is like. You know, will there be customization packs that we can buy? Can we buy the old pre-order bonuses at some point? Can we import our own? It's, there's lots of those questions coming in from chat. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we have a lot of uh, sort of plans for the future of different ways that we can customize the character sheets that are outside of things that we already deliver. So. Um, you know, again, I can't really speak to any solid plans that we are definitely going to be rolling out, but we have a lot of ideas around just the whole uh, look and feel of the character sheet um, box frames. So what can we do there to create some, some sort of different themes and looks and feels? Um, we are talking about uh, just other ways that we can roll out sets of these things. So you know, where you get the whole package, the frame, the theme color, the backdrop, sort of all delivered as one set for you. Um, and as far as uh, having these things available for purchase, I don't know what our, our end goal and decision is going to be with that. Um, but again, we are, we're always talking about ways that we can sort of bring our old uh, character flare pieces to users who didn't have the, the um, option to pre-order at that time. So it is, it is in our thoughts that how can we deliver these things to people who have not had the chance to get them. Um, and so as soon as we've got, you know, some of those pieces sort of worked out, we will, you know, be sharing them on the dev updates and, and make it very, a, a very clear how these things will be available to you. Yeah, no, and you know, in, in, the, in the meantime, you know, if that's stuff that you guys really want, I don't know, keep shining those bat signals man eventually uh <laughs> yeah we do always pass on those requests so when you throw them at discord twitter everywhere i mean they'll pass them along and that's how we know what people really really want to see no absolutely Melly, do we have any other questions from chat for you uh we do so i've got some stuff here about the the printable character sheet we've got from uh alice can care 911 can we uh in the future possibly change the layout of the printable character sheet or have uh, from Tatewan the ability to have the backdrops and frames and stuff on our printable character sheets? Also a question that my DM at home has. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, so uh, I think Pat spoke a little bit about the flow of the character journey in the, in the last update. And part of that flow is actually the sort of immortalizing piece, right? Um, and so we're, we're discussing how can we take the character sheet as a printable format and deliver the cool parts that you've customized. So your theme, your backdrop, and some things like that, um, and, and create a format that will allow you to, to bring that, you know, from your digital space to your, to your living room or your, your bedroom. Um, so uh, I don't know, you know, we don't have solid timelines for those things yet, but that's something that we really want to spend a little bit more thought and design process around. Um, and as far as the exportable PDF uh, piece that is a, the printable version of the character sheet, currently we don't have any um, like you know uh, roadmap plans for the near future to adjust the way that that PDF works. Um, but that is a huge area for us to explore, especially for uh, a potential. Um, subscriber benefit that would allow us to have some templates and things like that uh, for printable versions of your character sheet. So definitely things we're talking about all the time. There's so much opportunity for, for these types of things to just be creative and interesting and uh, customizable at the user level. So. And that's always kind of the trick too, right? We don't want it to just exist. We want it to exist for a reason and a purpose and, you know, and, and to be great. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully one that you haven't thought of yet, you know, that uh, we, we like to be able to stay a little bit ahead in that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, as much as I, you know, I do want to magnetize these to my fridge um, 
uh, I, I will love all the bells and whistles that sort of come along with the uh, with the immortalization on on the roadmap too. Uh, I feel like the the chat will uh, get angry at me if I don't pass this along because lots and lots of people are asking this. I'm going to read this one from Stretching Someone. I know it's harder than just flipping a switch, but is there any plan for a dark themed character sheet? Yes, this is the the big question that um, you know even internally we're always asking: <laughs> um, How do we get dark mode on the character sheet? So there, uh, and, and you're very correct. Uh, it is not as easy as flipping a switch. Although uh, once we get it working, it will be as easy as you flipping a switch to, to convert that mode. Um, yeah, so no, no current plans uh, in this area. Um, we do have this sort of default dark mode on the player app, which is really great. Um, but we are, we are always in talks, not only because we know you all want dark mode, but I want dark mode, Joe wants dark mode, Melly wants, to, everyone wants dark mode. So we will make this happen. I don't I, know exactly when, soon TM. I, it, it is no, um, I, I am not exaggerating when I say, look, me, me being introduced to the community was a little crazy and there are lots of crazy circumstances all around it. Uh, uh, it, it was a wild time. I think it was a year ago. Time has no more meaning um, uh, in the pandemic. But I, I, it is no exaggeration when I tell you that the first question that was asked to me um, was dark mode question mark, which <laughs> blew my mind. <laughs> not like, who are you? Not uh, do we keep getting shows? Not do I get to keep my books? Yeah, is everything okay? The it was, community has their priorities. Let's get to the general. important business. Priorities. Number yeah. one, dark mode. Yeah. Number two, are we still alive? Yeah. Number three, Arby's. Uh, <laughs> dev update brought to you by Arby's. Melly, yeah, I think we got time for one or two more questions for Julie. Uh, yeah, so we've got a few questions in here. We've got failed essays, Catalord, uh, some other folks asking um, about, so you've talked about sort of the design of how we interact with the character sheet, but there's also the My Characters page and how we interact with that and how you know we can organize characters in folders or tags. Is there anything that you have insight on there, Julie? Uh, yeah, this is a, another topic that is close close to my heart. Um, I have always, always wanted sort of as a, a personal vendetta to, to make that page better and more interesting and just more useful. Um, so something that Pat and I are working on sort of on the side is uh, what, could, what could that page be? What, what could we do there? Um, so, you know, we have this as something that is on our sort of far road map. Um, that we will be figuring out how to do things like folders, um, favoriting a character, uh, and maybe even just different views that allow you to see your character a little bit more like a card um, with some you know, basic data that will give you a little bit of a better picture. Uh, so those are ideas that we're exploring um, because we want it to be really easy and, and even fun to look through your characters and choose the one that you're playing, you know, for today's game, uh, or or even just, um, you know, decide which ones that are you ready to archive or play around with how they look at higher levels. Um, so look forward to that. That's a little bit further down um, our roadmap, but definitely a lot of thought and sort of theory going into how are we going to create that experience. That's awesome. And uh, I think we have time for yeah. one more question, Melly. Uh, yeah, we actually have a number of people that are asking. Uh, we got the Bebo, DM Anvil, a couple other people asking about you, Julie. What programming language you started with when you got into coding? How you got into coding? Where did you learn to code? Uh, so maybe a little bit about that. Oh no, did we lose oh. Julie a little bit? No, nope, there she is, she's back. She wants to keep her secrets. <laughs> no coding. <laughs> no, I'm not sharing my origin story. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a mystery. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't think she heard the question actually, Melly. Oh, sorry about that. So yeah, so uh, how you got started coding? What programming language you started with? Uh, where you learned sure. to code? 
Yeah, so um, I went to a coding boot camp, uh, which is some, you know, there's sort of two, two paths a lot of people take when they go into coding. Um, either it's a, a university, you know, computer science situation or a coding boot camp, or even self-taught. Um, but mine was about a seven month program. Um, I knew that I wanted to go into front end development. So that brings me into the JavaScript world. Um, and in at DDB, we love React, which is a JavaScript framework. Uh, so that's another um, piece to the puzzle as far as, you know, I was already learning how to use React. So it naturally fit well into this environment. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I used to do a lot of hobby coding uh, before I got this job where I would create little uh, JavaScript games in the browser just because I'm a gamer at heart. So that was sort of what drove me to learn, uh, you know, how to make those games. Um, and so naturally, uh, you know, working on DDB and the character sheet has been a really interesting way to take my coding experience um, and my love of gaming uh, and figure out how to how to take this tabletop game with rules that sort of break all the rules and make it uh, into a, essentially a digital video game version of it. Um, it's been a really awesome challenge to, to figure out how to create the right systems uh, through programming to control the rules of the game. I think that's awesome. And uh, I, I think too, uh, uh, hopefully that's, uh, people can uh, shoot their shot from there. You know, like learn coding, pick up your new skill. You never know when Sam will be, uh, will be siren songing uh, a, new, a new opening here or even here on the dev update. I think we're gonna start uh, evangelizing a lot of those, uh, a lot of those openings here. Uh, and so uh, uh, again, who knows? Uh, shoot that shot, you deserve it, you're worth it. Uh, I know that that's a, a, always a weird, hinky thing for me to end these things on, but I just want to make sure that everybody watching knows that you deserve people to play D&D &D with. Uh, you deserve good things. And uh, uh, I think you're fairly nice, even though we haven't met. Uh, speaking of fairly nice people, Julie, thank you so much for hanging out with us a little bit today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun chatting with you all. Hey, uh, Melly, I, I think this is another successful one in the books. We only had one connection hiccup. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. It was a solid day. You feel good? I do feel good. And I feel really excited because people got some very good answers about things they've been asking about a lot. Dark mode, folders, pre-order bonuses outside of pre-order. Like those are things we get every week. And you just got an answer from somebody who has the inside knowledge. So Heck yeah. Uh, and there you go. You got it. You got, you got some dark mode chat, which means my job is done, which means we <laughs> no longer be doing dev updates. Yes. Dev updates are over. Dark mode <laughs> has been uh, discussed. <laughs> or joke. And we'll see you guys next week. But in the meantime, again, candle keep mysteries, uh, pre-order, uh, still available. You'll get all those really cool perks. Uh, you'll get those frames that Julie showed off and the researchers dice set. Are, is available now. Uh, so if you already pre-ordered, check your dice, it's in there. And uh, if you pre-order uh, before Tuesday when the book comes out, you'll get them dice. Uh, we will see you guys next week on the Dev Update. Uh, we have a special guest. Oh, I should start teasing guests, right? Maybe, um, yeah. Unless it changes. I mean, so disclaimer on teasing guests is that also it will, uh, it will change a lot. Um, oh, hey. We're gonna talk to you guys. We're gonna schoolhouse rocket a little bit next week, I believe. And um, uh, one of our team members is gonna be coming on to to uh, to teach you guys how we go from book to beyond uh, here on uh, D and D Beyond. So we'll see you guys next week for that. Thanks so much. Hi everyone. <laughs>